Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. This is for Simplicity's new winter collection. If you're new here, this is the video series that I do where I look at an entire sewing pattern collection and I review each and every pattern, um, just kind of saying the things I like about it, pointing out fit issues that I see or, or may be able to predict in any certain way, talk about fabrics that they recommend, fabrics that I can also see it in. And it's kind of like just sitting around looking at the little fabric book at the fabric store with your friend, with your sewing friend. Um, so let's jump right in. We have a lined coat for the American Sewing Guild. So these patterns, a portion of the proceeds go to the American Sewing Guild. They say that they design it. I'm not entirely sure how that happens. If there's an actual designer with the Sewing Guild, I don't know. Um, if anybody does, please let me know. But it's a relaxed fit coat with notch lapels, inverted pleat at the center back, button closure, patch pockets with a flap. So pretty straightforward, kind of oversized um, coat here. You can see that we do have a dropped shoulder. Is, her, is that the seam? Yeah, the seam looks a lot lower on her than it does on the illustration. So I always picture, I always think that the illustration comes first, then they make the sample, and then they find the model and put the sample on the model so either she's just like a little bit more narrow shouldered than people her with her measurements or they made the jacket a little bit too big for her or for it well for they don't know who the model is right they don't know who's going to show up they i guess they get measurements and that's how they pick them so maybe it was just made a size too big or something i don't know but it does look a little bit like i would want that um, seem to be right here but there's the notched collar patch pockets easy way to get pockets onto a coat with this um, thick fabric and then we do have some kind of shaping here you can see it right here um, with that kind of princess seam sleeves are a little bit long too that's another indicator that it might be too big but here are our illustrations again knee length and I'm sure she's tall so if it were on an average sized average height person it would come below the knee i think the jacket's just a little bit too big that's all there is to it so no seams in the back other than this center back seam and it said somewhere that there was a pleat in the in the description it said there was a pleat in the back but i don't see a pleat anywhere let's see the line drawings um let's go here let me make sure inverted pleat at the center back not a pleat in sight so i don't i don't know what that's about um, unless it means the lining. Oh, the lining. Okay. That's very unclear. <laughs> I only was able to guess that because I've made jackets before and they put pleats in the lining so that you have the, you know, ease of movement. Interesting. Okay. I do like the little hooky thing. I like that a lot. All right. So back to the back of the envelope. All right, boucle, stretch wovens, tweed, twill, and wool blends. Okay, sure. Yeah, like any outerwear fabric, you could, you know, even make it in something like fluffy. You could do fleece. You could do Sherpa. Um, all those kinds of things. And then the lining is cotton blends or polyester blends. Again, if you need it to be super warm, you can do a flannel. And then there's um, lightweight fusible, three one-inch buttons. And then some twill tape. Interesting. I only saw one button. I'll go back and look. But um, it's oversized, so we can expect for there to be lots of ease throughout. Um, for example, in the bust, there's 11 inches. In the waist, there's a lot. 24, 34. What is that? 18. <laughs> and then in the hip, there's 10. So yeah, lots of ease. If you're in between sizes, definitely size down. And then if you don't want it to be as oversized, you might want to size down twice. Um, and that'll be able to, I mean, it's still going to be an oversized looking jacket, right? Because, you know, it has the drop shoulder and all, but, oh, it's double breasted. No wonder. Okay. So there's a button here. There is a button here. And then on the inside, there's another button. So that's where that comes from. Okay. Cute, simple, nothing we haven't seen before. You might even have a pattern like that in your stash already. Here are some pants, updated cargo trouser with separate belt, features higher waistline, 
belt loops with button closure, side seam pockets, and two cargo pocket styles. View A features a drawstring hem. Yeah, cargos are really having a moment, right? Okay, interesting that the cargo pockets are on the front of the pant, or that they're both on the front of the pant. I would expect one of them to be on the side. But I do like how this is like a boot cut trouser rather than an oversized slouchy pant. You know what I mean? Normally cargos are on like a, like a real baggy type of pant. This one's more fitted. I like that. Hands in pockets modeling, which if you've never seen these videos before, I don't like that because I can't tell how it fits. Like I'm sure as a model, she's comfortable because she has something to do with her hands, but it doesn't help me in seeing, like I can barely even tell what kind of pocket that is, you know, much less like how it fits. Um, but I do love the, how the um, belt loops are a little bit lower creating a little bit of a paper bag situation happening here, depending on how tight you pulled this. Cute, and then, all right, so we have this version. You could even tie it at the, at the, um. well, how can this be A and D? See this, A, O, are the pockets? That's confusing. Okay, here's A, we'll look at the line drawings maybe. Here's A, here's, B and D, I don't get how pants can be too, but there's this type of pocket that, what are you putting at your calves? I have no idea. Like, are you gonna store your phone down there? That would be really interesting. <laughs> That's so bizarre. And then C and D, I don't get it. Oh, the belt maybe is is a, um is D the belt? Yeah, D must be the belt. Wow, again, very, very confusing. Like if I'm new to sewing patterns, I'm, I would never have figured that out. Okay, D is the belt. Wow, okay. So this pant has just like a little patch for your inner knees and calves, you know, cause those might rub together, never. Um, okay, all right. So then there's that detail there. Interesting, it's like, uh, very impractical, but I guess that can be, fashion can be like that sometimes. Here's the back, thank you for showing me the back, but okay, hold on, hold on, computer issues, back. Okay, thank you for showing me the back. Um, the belt does have a lot of top stitching, that's a nice detail. And again, with the lowered belt loops, I love that. The fit through the crotch looks really good. You can see, nope, you can't, oh boy, if it does that again. I was gonna say, you can see the drag lines underneath her bum. Those are normal. You need those to be able to sit down. I'd like to see what's happening below that. But yeah, for something that has like a cinched waist, this looks not diapery, so that's really good. But yeah, there's D, our belt. Wow, okay. So Chino, cotton blends, lightweight denim, linen blends, stretch wovens, and twill. Yeah, all your bottom weight fabrics are gonna be suitable for this. Um, I can't think of anything else other than what they included. They they got them all. Then there's a lining, cotton blends, polyester blends. That's probably just for the pocket bags. And then a ton of notions, zippers. Oh, there's elastic in there somewhere. And maybe in the back. Zipper, adjusted to fit. How much? Three quarters of a yard of elastic. So... That's like 20 something inches. Yeah, it's got, it can't be the whole waistband. It's gotta be just part of it, back, part of the back maybe. All right, and then a belt buckle and buttons, obviously all of that good stuff. Okay, so fit wise, we are looking at the waist. I wonder if they are counting the paper bag. Yeah, because it looks like that it has, well, six, no, seven inches of ease at the waist. That's actually, that's a lot even if it is a paper bag waist. What's the hip say? They're uh, two inches at the hip. Yeah, I'd have to look at the instructions to know more about the construction to determine how the waist would fit. Is it, they're measuring it flat without the elastic? <clears throat> and so that's why it's so much. 
or is the paper wag that loose and then you tighten it up with the belt? I'd have to do more research to know that. I'd have to have more information that I just don't have access to. But uh, yeah, cute concept. I can see some people really rocking this. Cool. Okay. Next up, we have a coat and scarf by Elaine Heigl. Another new um, name to me. Have we ever seen Elaine Heigl before? Um, relaxed fit coats, mid thigh or above knee length, have drop shoulders, front inseam pockets, and straight sleeves. Design options include round neckline with or without stand collar, three quarter or long cuff sleeves. Scarf with angled ends has purchase tassel accents. Okay, so this is a jacket honestly kind of similar to the first one we looked at it just doesn't have the notched collar so you can do this kind of collar or you can add the little stand collar to it or I think this is separate and you layer it over top and you buy this little tassel thing but it just has patch pockets kind of like a just open cardigan the styling is not not it but um uh <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying I mean I guess yeah that one's that one's okay what is this made oh corduroy huh yeah it's just you know shapeless so it's just a little bit challenging to do much with it but if you just I think the problem sometimes when you're styling oversized things is you try and you try and work against that and you try and you know put a belt around it you try and tie it up you try and make it look smaller when really you just need to lean into how big it is like style it with baggy things you know don't always try have to put like a close fitting t-shirt and jeans underneath it's just that's just so basic I feel like I don't know we could do more um okay so fabrics are Chanel double knits fleece Melton is a wool novelty knit fabrics ponty sherpa and wool types and then for the little scarf you can do jersey or novelty knit fabrics i mean there's not much to the scarf couldn't you make it match the fabric too that might have helped maybe um alphanumeric sizing and very oversized again just double digits top to bottom in terms of um ease so yeah, I don't know. I just, maybe the colors are also kind of off. Like I would just love to have seen it like over a dress, maybe even a knee length dress. You know what I mean? Like mini skirt, something. Okay. Here we have Mrs. And Women's Dress by Madeline Intimates. So, and I think hers go, let's see. Yeah, up to 5X. So extra small to 5X. Dress and jumpsuit with corseted top, have back zipper, seamed cups, boning, adjustable lingerie, elastic straps, and elastic fold-over binding. Maxi link dress has shoulder ruffles and gathered skirt with hem ruffle. Jumpsuit has slim legs and front and back darts for fit. Whew. Separate pattern pieces for cup sizes, A through J. Wow. Okay. So for the curvy girls out there, the plus size girls are always talking about like, it's nice to see plus size, but it, none of it's cute. Like you can't get much cuter and sexier than this. Yeah. I mean, I would love to make something like this. I'm just, I just worry I would have nowhere to wear it, but you got to think, remember I talked about this last season. If they, if you are presented a pattern that has been styled very, very dressy like this, and you think to yourself, oh, I don't know, where would I wear that? Just imagine it in denim, and then you'll be able to tell, is it a style that with different fabrication would make it more casual and I would wear it more? Or would that not make a difference and it still feels dressy and I still wouldn't wear it? You know what I mean? So I do love the bustier situation happening here. I love the wide strap. So this is the same bodice. <clears throat> same bodice um and then below this you know what this would be amazing as in white and shades of white is a like rehearsal dress dinner uh rehearsal dinner dress 
or a reception, a wedding reception dress for the bride, just like this, but in white overlay instead of black overlay. Oh, that would be so cute. Um, but if I'm picturing it in denim, I'm not doing, I'm not doing the jumpsuit, right? That just is not, not hitting for me. The dress is really cute. We'll look at the line drawings and see, is it really just a gathered skirt, like attached? Is that all it is? And then I would leave this little ruffly thing off probably. And then I would wear it a lot more. But I love that Madeline is doing the, it's like a combination, right, of all of your bra making skills, all of her bra making designs, but in clothing. It's so on trend right now to have like clothing that looks like lingerie. So I'm loving that they are giving her the freedom um, to explore this a little bit more. Okay, line drawing wise, yeah, we'll look at the, oh, the back is stupid cute. You know what? I might do the jumpsuit but it would have to be like wider leg pants or oh man pleated pants something to give it a little bit more like I like the dress because it's uh, skin tight and then volume this feels a little bit still too close fitting but the fabrics are brocade cotton types jacquard power mesh and taffeta Contrast to and A also in all over lace and organza. If you did a power mesh with lace, it would still be see through. I don't understand. This power mesh should be like an underlying layer. Again, I never made, I have, I've made real lingerie, but not in a while. And I, it was very, very basic. So all of these like intricate things about it, I don't know fully, but I know that power mesh is supposed to be like a lining, no? Bodice B, you can also do a novelty sequin fabrics. Why can't you do bodice A in novelty sequins? Good question. Um, contrast two with the pants, also in velvet. Again, I think these suggestions are to accomplish this holiday look. Imagining it in denim. Imagining it in like white eyelet, seersucker, those very, very like casual fabrics. I think you could take the bones of this. Just the overlay pieces. Maybe you have to work with some lining with the bodice to get the cups and all of that. Um, but you should be able to do it out of just any, just about any fabric. I wouldn't go for the bodice, anything too lightweight or too slippery, but I think that you can do a lot more than this. And then I'm not even going to begin to read through all of these notions that you need. That's the thing with lingerie that just can be very overwhelming. Madeline used to, or at least with some patterns, releases kits. Like if you want to make this bra, buy this kit. You know what I mean? So check her website if you want to see if they offer that but they might not since this is a simplicity pattern and not a Madeline pattern. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so extra small through 5X. We're not going to get finished garment measurements on this because they do put all um, 10 of those sizes on the back of the envelope. But cute design, Madeline. Cute design. I hope some people make that. Uh, if I have, if I found myself with like a week with nothing to do, <laughs> I would give that a go. Um, sourcing everything, but it feels overwhelming. But dang, it's cute. It's real cute. I could even see it like on a red carpet somewhere. Okay, this is a Mrs. and Women's Top. This is what you curvy girls are talking about. This is not it. Like, I okay, I get maybe they're trying. Okay, with sh let's show a shoulder. But the rest of it, there's no shape. There's literally no shape. So... That's what I meant whenever I was giving kudos to Madeline for offering that up to 5X because y'all have bodies under here. You know what I mean? And yeah, I don't know. This is just not giving. And then again, the sleeve, we'll get into that a little bit more when we look at other pictures, but the sleeve is so long. We were noticing this with Vogue. Like if you're doing a, um, a oh, buffalo, that's not a buffalo sleeve. There's no such thing as a buffalo sleeve. 
Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It'll come to me soon, hopefully. With this really long cuff, this really deep cuff, you got to shorten the sleeve length. You know, it's already like way, way, way too long in the cuff. And this is like billowing over. Anyways, one shoulder top with sleeve variations has bust darts, shaped hemline. View A and B tops have pleated shawl drape. View C features a choker neck with double button closure. I'm interested to see what the... Oh, it, there's not going to be a separate listing. This is Mrs. Ann Women's. Okay, well, I like they gave the picture to the women's model. But yeah, that just looks sloppy to me. We can do better. We can do better. That is really pretty. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just the combination of like the full blouse and the full sleeve that isn't really working for me. But maybe it's also that, again, there's no shaping down here. So obviously her bust is larger. Her waist is teeny tiny. Like give us some darts down here or something. And then there's the choker one that does not have the little like droopy collar thing. I always like to see on these what the notions are too. Because if there's not elastic. Yep, no elastic. So we have single fold bias tape. Elastic cording for button loops and two buttons. So to get this one to stay like up, it'd be really nice to have some elastic to cr just create a little bit of tension there. There's not any. Same thing in these shoulder ones. You'd want to have a little bit of tension there. You can add it, but if you're new to sewing again, you don't know to do that. And even if I tell you that you should do it, you don't know how. And it's not something you can easily search for. <laughs> like how to add elastic to one shoulder top maybe I don't know but they're recommending silky types like crepe satin uh, crepe to sheen double georgette silky types and then a little bit of fusible interfacing maybe just to keep that neckline on the bias from stretching I don't know um, we've got in the bust yeah nine and a half inches of ease that is so much in the waist, 10 inches of ease. And then in the hip, 10 inches of ease. Nine and a half, 10 inches of ease. That make why? It doesn't have to be like that. I get it, girls. I hear you. I hear you guys in the comments. I see your TikTok videos, your Instagram videos. And I'm with you. I'm with you. Not even like a fisheye dart in the back. Nothing. So, I don't know. I feel like they're doing a little bit. But they, they're so far behind the eight ball. They got started with this, um, you know, making patterns for all kinds of body types. They got started so late that they're still playing catch up. Like there's still so much more to be done. Let's see how this one goes. I do see a body. So that's good. Mrs. and women's top and pants. A classic collar shirt done in a modern corseted silhouette. Okay. Round of applause. Can you hear me clapping? Better, better, better. Listen, I will give you credit when credit is due, but I will also call you out, right? If you're giving us plus size girls, like more shapeless, frumpy garments. Top has bust gathers, boning, long sleeves with cuffs and front zipper closure, slim ankle fit length pants with hook and bar closure, have belt loops, started back waist, front pockets, and single back welt pockets. I'm in love with this top. I want one immediately. Immediately. I even love the invisible zipper in the front. Okay, so let's get into it. We have a yoke, maybe, or like some kind of forward, oop, forward seam. You have your collar, which I think is just a one piece collar. No collar stand, I don't think. So that's easier to construct. Um, then you have your underbust seam. Now I will say I have to call them out because this is too small on her. This seam that's right here, when I look at other pictures, I'll zoom in more and show you, should be down here. Like there's not enough room through here. And you can see all of these drag lines pointing to where it wants more room to breathe. And that's all through the length of here. So if you are going to make the women's, I would triple check high point shoulder where this necklace is down to your bust point 
check that and see what the length is and then check that against the pattern piece. Um, make a muslin, even if you just tissue fit and lay this pattern piece over your body to make sure that this seam is coming up and over, like literally holding on to your breast. Like it should be like a cup, like a bra. Um, we have the long sleeve with the cuff. And then the pants are a little bit like, I don't feel like they really had to include them to be honest, but it's a pencil pant um, with this front seam, I think. And then this little like horizontal pocket. I love those. Those are great for people with curves. They don't pucker or do anything weird, stick out from your body, none of that. And then just your classic waistband. I want to see the rest of the line drawings first. Hold on. The back of this has a pleat, I think. It's a two piece sleeve, even better. Three button cuff with some pleats. I, I think this is a traditional um, sleeve cuff, like not one of the ones with the, what do they call it? It's like bias tape, basically. I hate those kinds of cuffs. Like I want the traditional one. And then the back of the pants, I wanted to check and see if it had this seam line going on the back. It doesn't. It only has these little darts. So these are great for fitting. You can add them to the back by following this dart line all the way down um, and then adding your seam allowances and piecing them back together. But um, it is nice to be able to like nip and tuck in different parts of your body for that. I think I kind of also would have liked to have seen like a, at least a straight cut, if not a flare to give some balance to the corset, but that's just me. Okay. So let's look at the pictures again or now. <laughs> okay. Can you see this seam here needs to be, it may be like a whole inch, three quarters of an inch lower. So you would shorten this part and you would lengthen this part. Okay. I do really love it though. Okay, here's the back. So interestingly enough, the back is too long on her. The front's too short, the back's too long. Interesting. Or at least, okay, the back might not be too long. What could be happening is that this piece is not wide enough to accommodate her hips. And so her hips being on this curve is causing the shirt to kind of shimmy up. And that's what's creating this fold here. Not the end of the world. Most people, when you're looking at her in this shirt, you're not gonna say, any, you're not even gonna notice. But me, in this particular video, <laughs> you know, being a little bit nitpicky, you know, I do notice those things. I'm also noticing this in the sleeve. That's very worrisome. So check your biceps. I guess it's the best way to say that. I don't think it has anything to do with the sleeve cap. I think that that's a good amount of like uh, peak or flatness in the sleeve head. I think it's just too small in the bicep. Yeah, and long again, but not super long, just a little bit too long. Okay, so yeah, those are the fit issues I see. The pants, however, those look great. Maybe a little bit here that you see that a lot though. Um, so I'm not going to harp on that too much, but everything else looks pretty good. I want to say these are like mid rise pants too on top of that, but okay. Cotton blends, lightweight linen blends and poplin for the top. Also shirtings. Um, you could even do like super cool stuff if you wanted with like faux leather maybe or corduroy suede lots of options um i think they're trying to go for like a business casual situation here though so but again why wouldn't they i guess if you were going to list every no you can list every single fabric that's suitable anyways um and then for the pants cotton blends gabardine linen blends stretch wovens twill and wool blends and then you some interfacing just a little bit. And then invisible separating zipper. I can't say that I've ever seen one of those before. Um, I think if you couldn't get your hands on that, something that's really easy to access, that might also be what you would more commonly see these shirts in stores made from would be that um, the little hook and eye tape. And then believe it or not, my 
audio went out. No idea what happened, but we're very close to the end here. I'm going to do a quick voiceover on the patterns that are left. This is a vintage dress. Um, the details on this, on the neckline, are incredible with like there's this pleat and this crossover and this whole thing happening. The thing I love the most about this dress was the darting. There's like three darts that go down the front, fisheye darts from like your under bust to your high hip. And then there's also fish eye darts in the back as well. Um, just really, really cool design, um, you know, focused in on fit, which I really appreciated. One thing that did kind of stump me about this pattern is the zipper. You can see that there's a zipper on the top of the neck, but that's not enough of an opening for you to get in and out of this dress. So there has to be a zipper on the side seam as well or that zipper needs to be longer. So something there was really off and funky, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, next up, we have this vintage coat, um, kind of an oversized coat, but what I really, really loved about this coat was the raglan sleeve, um, two piece sleeve. There's also some darting in the sleeve and just the shape of it. I just loved how it was kind of like flared at the, at the back. Um, the short one I think would be really, really cute, um, for fall or winter. All right. So this one is a unisex shirt. There's a plus size version. And then later on, um, in the collection, there's also a Mrs. version or not Mrs., but it's just a non plus size version. And I just cannot understand why we need another basic button down shirt. And so I was asking if, are, are we buying this pattern just because there's a man's version included with it? Is it the unisex? Is it, I can buy this one pattern and make a shirt for me and the men in my life? Is, or are they just like checking off a box over there? And they're like, you know what? We need unisex patterns and we need to cover all the basics. I, had, I don't know. I was just really, really confused by the whole thing. Like there's nothing like, uh, you can find a button down shirt online from hundreds of different pattern designers so i just understand why we're releasing a brand new one i don't i don't get that i don't get that at all so that's what i was questioning like are we buying this just because it's a twofer right because you can't just be in love with the design there's nothing to love about it so that was when i started to really start to question things with this collection <laughs> Then we moved on to this little loungewear set that includes this little cropped cardigan, kind of like a flare pant, both of which are knit. And then you have a little bralette that comes with it. All they give us in terms of photos is the cover of the pattern. So I don't get to see the back. I don't get to see the bralette without the cardigan on, nothing. Um, so that just made me really upset. I don't know. <laughs> I just was like, I mean... I don't know how you expect for me to buy a pattern with such little information. Like, so I got frustrated and just moved on to the next one. The next one, really not much better. It's this set of family vests <laughs> and the design is just not good. Um, it's, it's too long and boxy for the women. It's got a V neck for the men I mean, the kids are cute enough, like kids look cute in anything, but like, I don't see who needs a set of vests for the entire family. Anyways, they made their samples out of suede and denim. That feels like an odd choice. Like the whole thing was just, it's just not good. The woman's looks like a mix between a fishing vest and you know, whenever you go to get your um, teeth cleaned and they do the x-rays and they put that padded thing over you to protect you from the x-rays, that's what the woman's looks like to me. So I just didn't understand this at all. Like, are, are we doing vests for the whole family? Did I, did I miss something there? All right. And then a little cliche, but pajamas for the whole family. What I really did love about these pajamas are the design of the pants. It appears that they have a bit of a drop crotch. Now, I can't tell if that's intentional or if they're just all way too long in the rise, but hers do look kind of cool in that regard. Like, I can see myself lounging around. I think free people movement has some, like, fitted knit um, 
pajama or like lounge pants that have a bit of a crotch d drop design. See how it is on the back there? That I really loved. The rest of it I could do without, but I did think that was cool about the pants. All right, things started to look a little bit better with another vintage pattern. They threw this Jiffy at me out of nowhere. I haven't seen a new Jiffy pattern in I don't know how long. Jiffy's known for very few pattern pieces, easy to sew, you know, that kind of thing. This one is adorable. The thing I love about it is the raglan sleeve, and it kind of has like a grown-on collar situation happening too. But look at the darts on the front. There's a bust dart and also a French dart. And then in the back, on top of all of that, you also have fisheye darts in the back. So fit is on point with this one. You can see all those darts there. Um, just such a cool little fun design. Now the little belt is either purchased or ribbon or self. I can't remember if they said self was an option or not, but they were telling me or you, us, all of us that you could wear it higher or lower than your natural waist, but not at the natural waist. That was not an option. So I thought that was funny, but I do love like the little slung belt. I think that's really cute, especially if you get something that's like um, 70s like you know medallions or whatever it is I thought that would be really fun but this is a cute little design I'm thinking I might try this one for the next vintage to modern would you guys like that or can you envision this more modern already or do you need help with that um, let me know in the comments if this is a good option for that or not all right another vintage jiffy this one from the 60s again with the bus dart and the french dart um, this one has the option of taking like this little collary thing and tying it in the back or having no collar and then sleeved or sleeveless, um, close fitting design, like a pencil skirt or sheath dress or whatever. Um, but again, the, the darting and the seaming and the fit of this is just very, very inspiring. And I wish more of our fitted dresses these days had these details to help it fit us better. All right, I sped this part up because now we just get into kind of like the costumes and the holiday gifts and the different cute little crafty type of projects. I do love looking at those projects. These pet wings or whatever are really cute. Um, they do make great holiday gifts um, and just fun little like one-off projects so you can just like cleanse your palette with. Um, and they have some cute options for aprons. These are some zipper pouches. Um, those were fun, but then they tucked in this little women's pattern, um, another vintage dress. What's cool about this is you see the girl on the back left with the fitted dress. That is an underlayer to the white dress in front. So you make the dress in the back and that is your underlayer. And then you make something sheer to go on top of it. And you can add like this one has fur trim on it. Or you can make just the outer layer in something opaque and then that's your dress. So it really is like three dresses in one kind of, and I thought that that was really fun and inspiring. But the little sheath dress again has that bust dart and French dart and fisheye darts going down the back. And then the overlay part has like a bias binding um, neckline with like a little bow. Um, long sleeve or sleeveless. So I thought that'd be a cute, fun option. It'd be great for like bridal something or another, this white one in front, um, or a fun holiday party if you did like a glittery something underneath that shown through like the, the webbing or the mesh or whatever it is on top. I think you can find some really cool, fun options um, to mix and match for this. So that one was really fun to look through. All right, the last pattern of the collection <laughs> is this accessory set where you get these like um, hand warmers and these various hats. But the one on the top right, <laughs> it just looks like you put um, her in like kids leggings. We're going to come to it here in a second. This one has a little scarf. I felt like the scarf was a little chintzy, like we could add more, but this looks like leggings on her, on her head, like kids leggings on her head. The waistband is on her forehead. And then the little things coming down on their feet. Am I wrong? Like what, what even is that? Like, are you supposed to tie those? Like, I don't even know. This is not healthy either, but we really ended it on a sour note. If you ask me, um, but I had to talk about that one because that view C is just really something else. All right, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for sticking it out with me with this um, audio issue here at the very end. Um, but I want to know what you guys thought about this collection in my mind. There were a few pieces that were really, really great. I do love that corseted top so much. 
Um, but I think it says a lot when the vintage patterns are the most exciting. Um, some of you had said that about Vogue's winter collection as well. Um, I could not agree more. And it looks like a repeat of that. Like I get we're winter, we're into the year, they have to throw in the pajamas and the gifts and, you know, crafts projects and all that kind of stuff. But I just was left kind of wanting more in terms of the clothing department. Um, it was a lot of, we've seen this before. This is too basic. I know it's simplicity, but simplicity can still be cool. Um, as made evident by that, that corseted button down. I want more of that. Well, let me know what you guys thought. I have to go. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.